for success. This webinar is brought to you by Great Garment Graphics. My name is Peggy Elliott and I'm your presenter today. I work for Stalls ID Direct and I am the Product and Training Manager. Happy to be joining you and presenting today's webinar. Today we're going to talk a little bit about some basics of setting up your heat printing business. And some of the things that we're going to cover or is the initial setup of um, just your work area itself with setting up your heat processes. So we'll talk a little bit about um, space that you need to have for your work area in um, perspective to the heat press that you have or a heat press that you might be looking to purchase if you're getting into the business new. And we're also going to talk about some storage of products and, and accessories ways that you can store products and accessories in addition to the importance of, of proper storage. We'll also cover some organizational tips and then we'll discuss also ordering made easy. And this is all going to be helpful for you to make a, an efficient production process as well as make uh, production comfortable for your staff and hopefully help you increase your efficiency so that you have good delivery times and are able to keep your customers happy. The first thing that I want to talk about is the heat press. Now there's different style heat presses and for those that you are that already own them and know how they operate this might be a little bit of a review but for those of you getting into the business and you're looking to purchase a certain type of press um, there's certain considerations that you want to have when you're going to purchase your press so that you make sufficient use of the space in your shop. A swinger model is going to swing to the left or right depending on how you have it set and this model here on the left of your screen is going to be showing the fusion press which also draws out towards you. So that's something that you're going to want to consider when you're setting up your heat press if it swings to the left or right do you have enough space on your counter to allow for that to swing out or when you're pulling it towards you drawing the bottom platen towards you, are you going to have enough work area to maneuver around? Um, likewise, the clam press, it's going to just pop open upwards. So there's two different main styles of presses in the industry and that's something that you're going to want to consider. Also the overall size of your press, these happen to be 16 by 20 platens and you can go down to a size say such as a 11 by 15 which is going to be a little bit smaller portable type of press. So that's going to take up considerably less counter space than these two larger models. So those are things that you need to keep um, in mind. And the one thing that you can do is you can always get the overall dimensions from your heat press supplier so that you know exactly how much room you're going to need on your counter in order to put that in your shop. You want to make sure that you have enough room to work again because cramped spaces are only going to slow down productivity and make less room to maneuver. So make sure that you give your staff ample space to work within. Some considerations for that and a way to make um, some more space in your shop would be using carts. And I've shown a couple different models here. So whether you're putting equipment like a cutter or a heat press um, in your shop, you want to make sure that you get the proper cart size, but this will allow you to have more counter space to utilize. And not only that, but when you have a cart like this, you have a little bit more flexibility in your shop. You can move it around within your shop, and what we have a lot of customers do, and we've actually encouraged, is to increase sales. What you can do on weekends, or if you're doing a particular promotion, is wheel your press up to the front of your store. So if you have a window front, Everybody can have a great view walking by your shop and they'll be able to see what you're doing. They're going to become intrigued and probably want to step inside and take a look. One of the things that we have up north in Michigan is um, we're famous for our fudge and a lot of the fudge shops work right in the storefront window. So the idea of that is they're enticing the customers and more often than not I'm going to walk in there and I'm going to buy some of that fudge because it's right there in front of me and I'm looking at the process and it really does draw customers in. So that's another great way um, to use the cart on the press, or the shoot, I should say the press on the cart. Um, you can maneuver it around your shop. The other thing about the cart too is that it does have storage space underneath. So when you're purchasing a cart, if that's an option you want to go with, 
get one that does have shelves underneath it. And you can buy carts that have more than one shelf. Um, the model on the right side does have handles to make it easier to maneuver. And there is um, space a little well in there that you can store uh, different accessories like your heat eraser. The other thing that we're going to talk about is workstations. When you have your workstation set up, you want to make sure that you have everything you need accessible for your employees so that they have everything that they need at their fingertips. Again, it's going to make the most efficient use of their production time. So if you notice in this one photo with the Fusion shown, there's a cabinet right underneath that's going to hold different manuals that they might need for the heat press, um, keep catalogs accessible, also, any accessories like cover sheets, thermo tape, all the accessories are going to be held within this cabinet so that they have easy access to it and they don't have to hunt through the shop to get the accessories they need to complete the job. The other thing that we notice in the picture on the right, again, you have your accessories out and at hand, but the other thing is your application sheets. Keep them posted out for your staff to reference so that they can quickly do their heat applications and they're right there for quick reference. They don't have to go hunting for them. Another thing that you can do is keep a binder. If you don't have the wall space to actually post them, um, you can always keep them in, lamin put them in laminate sheets, I should say, or um, put them in plastic sleeves and keep them in, in a binder. So the binder is right there on the countertop for reference. This is a little um, diagram that I, I like to show. And I'm going to liken this to anyone that's ever experienced having a kitchen remodeled. One of the things that they say is that you should always have a triangle workspace. And so when you're looking at the first triangle, I've got the first step at the bottom lower right is where you're going to design, cut, or print in the first step of your work process. And the second step would be you're either going to, depending on if you're cutting your own design or you're just doing heat application, if you're cutting your own, you might weed or mask your design. If you're simply doing heat press or heat printing, then you might be laying out lettering in this step. And then the third step. The third area of the triangle is when you're actually doing the heat pressing. Um, liken this to your sink, your stove, and your refrigerator. Everything is around you at access. And that's one of the things that's going to make your production flow very efficient. And then in between, if you notice, I've got on the diagram your counter space or your storage areas. So again, when you're going from part, uh, each part of the process for your heat decorating, you've got all the different components that you need for an efficient production flow. This is something that's also um, used in our trade show department. When we're considering how we want to set up our trade show booth, this is something that we always keep in mind because we want to make sure that when we're demonstrating at a trade show, we have everything we need at our fingertips so that we can do a proper demonstration for our customers. And often we're, we're looking for different ways to improve that. Um, over the years, we've done a lot of different improvements by continuing to evaluate our workspace. And that's something that you should do daily in your business as well. Now I'm going to move on to a little bit um, some tips and tools that you can use for efficient production processes. And you'll have to excuse my um, photography here. I'm not a professional photographer, but I did take some pictures internally here at Stahl's ID at, of some of our work areas so that you can get some ideas to help you and your work flow and with your business. In this particular photo, what we have here are just homemade ro rollers that we use to set our material on, often after it comes off of the cutter and we're going to do the weeding process. We also do something um, when we ship our orders that we put a protective liner on there to protect the lettering. So where our where cut materials are produced, we have this little setup and they have this roller system that makes it very easy for them to apply the liner. So having your material set on rollers kind of gives you a little bit more hands-free um, to work with the lettering itself and do your weeding process. 
So that's just a consideration for you, and I thought it might be a good idea for those of you that do cut your own product in-house. A little tip for you there. The next thing that you want to make sure that you do is, again, it's, it's all about keeping things at your staff's fingertips. I'm going to be saying this throughout the presentation. Um, one of the things that we have is placement guidelines. You know, instead of having staff guess about where they should place the product on the garment, keep the, these types of reference tools posted for them so that they don't have to constantly be asking the questions, but they can just keep on working and glance up and know the proper placement for jackets, for polos, whatever the case may be. If it's a pant leg, keep that reference out there for them so that they, they know the proper placement. Another item is heat printing tips. You can post this out there so that they know the proper sizes. Um, this is not only helpful for your staff, but it's also got the, um, it's going to help them reference the right sizing actually when they go to order product for your next job. Um, on the side, it also has different application tips. And these are reference tools that if um, you are looking to post these in your shop, they are on our website. So it is a handy tool that you can go right to our website, search for placement tips, and it will come up for you. And you can print that off of our website and post in your store. You don't have to recreate this document. We already have it ready for you. One of the other things that you, sh you could consider, too, for your production is keeping a dry erase board. And you can use this to track and prioritize your daily orders or the jobs for the week. It's very helpful to maintain efficiency and let your staff know what's coming in the pipeline. And we do this throughout the um, business here at Stahl's ID as well. Calendars of local events. This is something that's really important. If you do certain events every year, make sure that you are, you're aware that it's coming in the next couple weeks and do everything that you can to prepare for that. And it's just going to make your production that much go that much more smoothly. You can create a work schedule to manage the flow of your orders. And your employees are really going to appreciate this because they're going to be helping you in advance and preparing for the orders that are coming. Now, I'd like to just go over some of the reasons for the importance of proper storage. And on a day-to-day -day basis, this doesn't always come to mind, but again, productivity is going to be increased when you have access to all the items that you need for your job. It's going to increase your efficiency. The other thing about your work environment that's very important and it also plays into proper storage is a temperature-controlled work environment. Not only is this going to be pleasant for your staff and it's going to keep them comfortable, which will keep them productive, but it's also very important for your products. Um, a humid work area is going to affect um, heat trans or can affect heat transfer papers. It can affect inks and adhesives. So you want to make sure that you have a temperature-controlled work environment. And by that, I don't really mean to get technical. Um, it's, it's just basically make sure that you don't have it too humid in the work area um, so that your inks, when you're, if you're printing or using inks in your business, they just they dry quickly for you, um, and that you don't have any tackiness with your heat transfer papers. A tip for your heat transfer papers, if you do work with those, or if you're thinking about using inkjet transfer papers, we usually recommend that you keep those in a plastic Ziploc bag. So that's another tip um, for any, anyone using transfer papers. You don't want humidity to get into those papers, or they're not going to print properly for you. The other thing with proper storage is housekeeping. Um, a clean shop is going to lead to productivity. It's also going to help you um, actually get a good heat printing product out the door for your customer. Dust and deb debris, that's going to affect your product as well. So you want to make sure that daily your staff wipes down the counters and your presses and your cutters, um, just keeping it free of dust and debris. The other thing that you should consider as well is monitoring your inventory levels. That's just a part of routine housekeeping. So any products that you might use on a regular basis, just keep a, a tabs on how often the, the inventory is being depleted because that way you can kind of schedule in when you need to reorder those or if you need to order them more often, you'll know that as well. 
so that you're not left with product um, with an empty shelf and then not being able to deliver to your customers. Above all, proper storage is going to lead to safety. Um, I can't tell you the amount of people that we hear from that, you know, they have work-related accidents because they have large rolls of material out in the middle of the floor or even off to the side, but it's not properly stored on shelves. So you want to make sure that you have proper storage for that reason as well. And also keep items within reach for your staff. Instead of them having to stretch and reach for things up high or possibly get on a ladder, um, try to keep them in reach so that you know, they're not going to be hurting themselves in the process. Next up, I just want to show a few different, just one second, I'm just having, there we go, the next slide's up. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is just, I'm going to review a couple different ways of storing different products, just to give you a few ideas. So for heat transfer materials, again, um, this is my photography, but this is in our trade show area where we prepare our products to ship off to various trade shows. And you can see they have it very clearly marked with labels made by our pre-space product, um, but very clearly marked the heat transfer materials on the boxes so they know exactly what, bo what is in each box and can go to it and grab it quickly. On the right side of the screen, you'll see a different type of storage, but it's a storage rack. And you just want to take into consideration when you're purchasing different types of racks, the size rolls that you hold um, or store in your shop, make sure that the weight isn't too heavy for the type of rack that you're purchasing. Um, so just make sure that it's adequate to hold the weight of the roll size that you store. And here's just another few ideas for storage. Um, you can get storage boxes and the black part we call the guts of the box. But this is something that Stahl's ID does have available and I'm certain you can purchase it elsewhere as well. But it is sectioned off nicely so that you can properly store letters and numbers. You don't want your film letters and numbers to be um, wrinkled. So if you, if you don't store them this way, you do risk the chance of them getting creased. So it's nice to have flat storage for your letters and numbers as well as your transfer papers. And you can also remove the guts and put your transfer papers in there so it's just a solid box. On the left side, those are rhinestones. And just in a basic plastic, um, a plastic container just with lids so that you're not going to have them tipping all over and making a mess in your store. And those are a dime a dozen. So these are just different ideas of what you can do for storage within your business. Again, these pictures are going to show accessories as well as some of your supplies that you're going to need when you're heat printing or preparing orders. So just your basic desk organizers, again, on the left side, those are kit boxes, but proper labeling, it's clear labeling, it, you can see and identify right away what the product is so that your, your staff can quickly grab it for you. Now these are some pictures that I actually borrowed from the internet, um, but paper trays such as the one shown here, you can also use jewelry boxes or drawer organizers for office supplies. Um, I came across this one binder which I thought was very handy because it's easily, um, it stands up and it's easy to reference and page through, but this is perfect for putting in your heat press manuals, your cutter manuals, you can also use this for your application instructions or the placement guidelines that we talked about earlier. The containers shown on the right are a magnetic containers, which are very handy. So if you had a magnetic um, wall in your shop, you can hang these up. So it's kind of a space saver as well. So it serves a dual purpose. But you can store your blades in these. You can store rhinestones in them. If you um, have various size needles for your embroidery equipment, you can you could use those for the storage as well. Transfer papers is what I had in mind for the paper tray. So it's another way to store your different transfer papers. And it's nice because you can keep them separated by the different types that you may have. Um, there's transfer papers for darks. There's some for lights. 
there's some that stretch. So you have the various different sections that you can keep them nicely separated. The next thing I want to talk about is ordering made easy. Um, again, you're going to have different ways of referencing things for your staff, but just keeping a bulletin board with, there's one document on there called a reference sheet. This has all the different um, companies that we use to source blanks and things like that when we're decorating garments for trade shows. But keep a, a post up on your, or up on your board, keep a um, list of all the different contacts that you have. Um, when you're not there, if your staff doesn't have to contact you or slow up to ask somebody else a question and they can quickly look to see um, what they need to, who they need to contact for a particular order or just anything that they need to reference, the more items that are at their fingertips, the more self-sufficient they can be and keep the work process going. And you can also see there's the catalogs there um, of, for various blank goods for reference as well. So catalogs, price lists, operating manuals, um, order forms, and contact numbers. Those are all things that you should have for reference. One thing about order forms that's important to note, um, and it's something that we suggest for our customers, is if you happen to deal with a lot of sports teams, create a roster order form for your customers. Make it as easy as possible for them to order from you. So, it can include their team colors, but create the form so that it's easy and quick for them to fill in for you. And then all you need to do is turn around and get that order produced for them. And that is almost it for our webinar today. The only other thing that I wanted to mention is um, because I am the training manager here at Stalls AD, I do want to stress the importance of training your staff. So. Any of these items that they're not familiar with, but um, you may oversee yourself, this is something where you could train your staff to take over a little bit more responsibility and help you out by training them on the different processes, whether it be ordering product for your store or ordering um, garments. Sufficient training is very important, and not just about ordering, but also about doing those housekeeping things and keeping important reference items out, um, cleaning up the shop on a daily basis. It's all going to make your production that much better. And not only will your environment be a clean and safe one, but it's also going to be an environment that your customers are going to like to walk into and feel good about purchasing from you because of it. And that is it for today's seminar I am or webinar, and I am going to ask Deborah um, to please let us know what the next webinar dates are for you in case you are interested in joining us for our next presentation. Thank you so much for attending. We actually have a couple questions if you don't mind. Sure. So somebody's asking if there's a formula for pricing your garments. I know that's always a big question on customers' minds. Is there anything that we can give them or perhaps we can post something on the blog later for them on that? Sure, and I believe we do have um, a basic calculator on our website as well. So I can search that information out for you and direct you to the proper place in a follow-up blog. Perfect. And then um, someone's asking if we can just repeat the slide before the paper trade slide. The auto was lost and she missed it. Do you mind going to that one real quick? Sure. The slide before the paper tray. Let's see. Just a little bit of a delay, Deborah. So, yep. So she's saying the one after the magnetic stuff on the wall. Oh. <laughs> Did I go the wrong way? It's after that one. This I think one? She's talking about this one. Back one more, she says. <laughs> there you go. Paper tray. Oh, 
Oh, no, before that one, one more. This one, accessories and supplies. <laughs> so if you wouldn't mind just really quickly again, Ty, just going through that. Oh, sure. Um, basically, I was just stating that this is a, another I, rough um, photo for me, but for storage. So you have your office supplies. This is just a simple desk organizer from your office supply store, but you can keep your heat eraser, your easy weeder, um, whatever accessories you need at hand. And then on the left side is just, it, this is our actual storage internally, um, how we store our accessories. And it's just a matter of um, clearly labeling your storage area so that it's it's easily to or it's easy to quickly grab what you need for the job. So make sure that you have not every everything should be properly stored, but also properly labeled and clearly labeled for your staff. Okay, so that should be it. So um, just real quick, everybody, our next webinar is April third. Uh, it's called Driving New Business and Creating Customer Loyalty, and the one after that, April tenth. Um, tips and tricks for creating apparel with Stalls Cut Up, which is a new product by um, Stalls and Great Dane Graphics. So, and you can always view our schedule at greatgarmentgraphics.com slash schedule. Thank you, everyone, for attending. All right. Thanks, Todd. All right.